Back, controlling the back, you know, it's a, it's a very important part of my game. And why is that? Because I passed the guard so tight and so well that in the past couple of years, everybody started turning their back to me to defend my passes, you know? That's why, you know, many years ago, I thought to myself, man, they turn their back to me all the time. I got to capitalize on it and I got to finish every time I take the back. So I, I work years and years and try to perfect my techniques, my grips. And uh, I came up with new grips, new ways to take the back, new options. Think about reaction, how my opponent's going to react to this. First thing I'm going to do, and my, I'm, I'm thinking about this the whole time, is when I take the back, I don't want this guy rolling over and replacing guard on me. Don't, don't come up over here. Okay? I don't want him doing this. That's the first thing I'm thinking right off the bat. So go back. So the way I'm going to avoid this is I came up with this position years ago is I'm gonna come in with my left hand and I'm gonna turn it so the, the back of my hand it's gonna go right against almost like on his groin here and what this is gonna do is it's gonna make it really difficult for him to roll do the same roll so I'm avoiding the guy from rolling right there okay so if he stands up a very important uh, uh, detail on this position is you gotta understand how your arms work. You know, what I mean is this. The more you bring your elbows in, the more strength you're gonna have, okay? Even when you, you know, we talk about passing the guard, half guard, all those techniques we've done, you know? When your elbows are in, you're much stronger. As soon as you start overextending your arms, you're starting getting weak. So what I mean is this. When you get that choke, Look how I manipulate my elbows in. Both elbows come in. And then from here, I'm really strong. And that's when I'm going to start choking this guy. So how are we going to avoid the guy from jumping over your leg? Simply by adjusting our hips and locking my leg right on top of his hips as high as I can. You see how my legs are locked here? Now, how is he going to jump over? Impossible, you know? But as you get to the position, if you lock your legs, look how low my legs are. My legs now are locked below his hips. So what he can do here, now he can easily jump. Now he's out of the position. position. Now, right? try to put some weight on me. And he's putting the weight. As he's putting the weight, see how he sticks his neck out? So put the weight again, Daniel. I have a chance to finish the fight and choke this guy out. Right from here. Okay? So, what I'm going to be doing here is this. He puts the weight on me. As he puts the weight, look how I'm going to switch my grip from the arm. And I'm going to trap this arm. Just like that. Okay? We did this before. Now we're using one hand technique to trap the arm. As I do that, I go around the neck and I secure the shoulder. Just like we are doing before. Okay? Rear, rear naked choke. But now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to choke him with only one hand. I'm going to start bringing this elbow down. And I got the choke with one hand. You'd be amazed how this works. Okay? So you basically... So I open that arm. Boom. Arm is out of the range. Now look what I'm going to do with my right hand. I'm going to slide this hand all the way to his wrist. Here. Okay? What this is going to do is... This guy is real strong if I stay here on the forearm, okay? But if I go to the wrist, I'm basically controlling his own arm, and it's gonna give me a lot of leverage on this guy here, and I'm gonna show you why it's gonna give me leverage. Because once I keep this arm out, and I control the guy by the wrist, he's gonna break his grip. I break the grip even more, I'm at the wrist, now all I gotta do is, he's gonna try to re-grip again, and as he tries to re-grip, he doesn't have enough power to keep this arm in range, to relock the hands, okay? 